Um, but right now, uh, we have uh, Larry Hemsley here with us, and he's presenting his research on the D text editors and IDE plugins. Before the talk starts, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? I know you do that in the video, but this is for the benefit of the Q&A video later. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, a well, summary of the video. This is basically just me uh, trying out all the different editors because I really like trying new things like new operating systems, new compilers, new text editors. I got the idea because people asked on the forum, which I've read daily for a long time, what text editor could they use? And they got multiple different answers. And so... I've been trying out different text editors. I didn't really realize there was so many of them. <laughs> and I didn't realize that you could do D with Emacs. <laughs> but it was an experience for me because um, it was a nice experience because, I, like I said, I like trying out new things. And so I was just trying to get them all configured correctly, and which was really hard sometimes. And sometimes they didn't work. And I started with some of the old editors that Mike mentioned in his presentation earlier in the uh, regular conference, the not online one, <laughs> which I enjoyed a lot of because I, I, I just like those kind of things. So well, uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's sort of boring, actually. So it's really informative, though. I learned a lot from that video that I wasn't aware of. And uh, the other thing is, is I realized that most people that are watching this have already picked their favorite editor and are not interested in any new editors. But that's not the point. The point is, is to just to try them out and see if they're working correctly for, you know, doing what they're supposed to do with uh, Decode. What you did when you started this project, you went through all of the text editors and IDEs on the, the D, D wiki. Yeah, that's yeah. that was your source. Some of those you already had copies of on your local drives or whatever. How long have you been in the D community? It was, it's uh, several years now. I really, I've been trying to remember when I first started because what happened was when I retired the first time, is when I actually got interested in computers and programming. And then I, w I wasn't, I just divorced my first wife or she divorced me actually. And so I got married in 2002 to my current wife. And so it was sometime after that. So uh, I do remember the very first conference in Seattle and the one after that in Oregon and the one in on Amazon. I've, I've watched I've watched all of what I could. So I've also read all the books. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, and, and like I said, I've been lurking on the forums every day. I read the forums. That's one of the things I do when I check my email is read the forums. Uh, you, you have a, a degree in biology and yeah. you worked as a clinical lab technician for, for a long time. Did you always have the programming bug or did it come to you later? No, that's a really long question. I mean, that's a really long answer. To that <laughs> Actually, I didn't. Just the opposite. My dad was a uh, mainframe programmer, mm -hmm. systems analyst. You know, when the machines were really big. Yeah, before my time. And, but yeah, uh, I didn't like them. I didn't like the noise they made. And I didn't, you know, when I went to work with him, I didn't like them at all. So I was anti-machine. Unfortunately, when I first started in the lab, everything was manual and I loved it. And then they automated everything. And so then I got interested in fixing machines. And then when I semi-retired, I found out I had a knack for fixing computers. And so I was fixing computers hmm. for friends and relatives and things. Someone said, why don't you get certified? Why don't you get A plus certified? So I took a class in that. And then I got Microsoft certified, network certified. Then I decided I was going to take programming classes for some reason. And I signed up for a C programming class, which was not the easiest language to learn when you start. So it's not, no. But I found it really interesting and I'm interested now. So mm -hmm. I, I had the bug very young, but I wasn't able to act on it because my parents knew I wanted to learn to program because I wanted to make games and they didn't want to invest all that money in a, in a PC back in the early 80s uh, to uh, just so I could make video games. They thought it was a waste of time, but uh, yeah, uh, I can relate to that. Yeah. So I, I did learn as, as a hobby though, but it, it's, I didn't take a course, but I struggled through it by myself, uh, but I eventually got it. I find it, you know, in, in some ways fulfilling, it's probably the best hobby I've ever had. I've stuck with it longer than any other hobby, longer than guitar, longer than, you know, everything else. Would you feel the same way? I mean, were you, was it, was it among the, the top activities of your life and what do you find, what, what draws you to it? 
It is now, but it wasn't at the time. But yeah. in the in the mid eighties, I I uh, broke down. I have two sons, mm -hmm. and when they were younger, I bought them a Commodore sixty four, and it was basically so they could play games on it. But I found out that you know it had a basic interpreter with it, and so I wrote programs. I wrote basic programs. Mm -hmm. I actually wrote wrote one. The first program I ever wrote, wrote was um, one that took 500 samples from normal people and and calculated the normal distribution, you know, for um, normal ranges for chemistry tests because I was a lab technician. Right, right. right. And I bought all the Commodore books too. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm great for buying books. I really didn't get the programming bug. I mean, I really didn't get it really bad. I mean, I really didn't get it really as bad, you know, uh, as it is now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Zan, because I was still working in the lab and I was still interested. I'm, I'm basically a scientist, you know, I'm not a programming math person. Right, right. My older brother, who's 18 months older than me, is a is a math person. Everything he likes, I don't like. And everything I like, he doesn't like. So. <laughs> That's well, how we grew up. So. Mm -hmm. He liked computers. He's a, he was a systems analyst. My older sister married a software engineer. You know, what can I say? I didn't. I really wasn't interested in computers until way later. Yeah, you weren't interested until you were. Yeah. Now you know the, the only other hobby I have is really is fishing. So I go mm. fishing. Yeah, that's one I never stuck with. <laughs> so, a lot of fishermen in my family, but uh, I am oh, not yeah. one of them. Yeah. My brother doesn't like to go fishing and I like it. So, you know, <laughs> like I said, everything, we were only 18 months apart and it was really strange because we were like opposite people, you know? Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you to go through all of these IDEs? I mean, had you gone through some of them already or did you do them all for this talk or what? You know, I uh, configured the... Uh, text pad editor that I used when I was taking a C class, I configured that for D uh, really early on. And the, the Zeus editor, I, I configured really early on. And I've looked at some editors. I've looked at like Visual Studio and, you know, Visual was Visual D. And I've looked at Visual Studio Code with uh, Code D. And I really liked uh, Dext and uh, the D delaying ID. And I looked at the um, Poseidon D, which was I was really surprised to find out that it was still being actively developed. Yeah, that was the one and that actually, it's jumped out. Really nice editor, if, although the mm -hmm. new version doesn't work real good. So yeah, that one. The newest that... version, like I said in my talk, doesn't really work really well, but the old version worked really good. And you know that, and the the guy that develops that is he. I think he's uh, Chinese. He lives in Taiwan. One. Mm. And uh, he actually wrote a, a tree setter parser for the uh, auto completion on that. And the auto completion really works good on the, on the editor. So, well, I know somebody in the Discord who uh, probably wasn't aware of that, who just did his own tree sitter grammar. Uh, yeah. Or, so. Actually, it, it's on his website. Huh. I mean, he's, he's on GitHub. So I found it interesting that he took it over because. There was no uh, current fee basic IDE because it was wasn't being developed. <laughs> it's kind of a weird story, actually. But I was glad to see that he still did the D version too, and it is actually written in D, and it uses the the IUP library. So, mm -hmm. yeah, IUP is the one that's developed at Tech Rio. Uh, the uh, yes. Tech Rio, yeah. So, yeah, it's the same one that the, um, the Lua guys, yeah, the Lang IDE uses. Do you remember an editor called Crimson Editor? No, I have never heard of that one. Okay, yeah, because I mean, it's not on the wiki because it's defunct. It's been defunct for years. But when I got into the D community, that was the editor everybody was using on Windows. And I gave it a go and I loved it. It was kind of like uh, what uh, Sublime Text and VS Code later became. It was, it was you know, yeah. primitive compared to those, but it was a one-man project. And that, that just became my favorite editor. Even after he, he stopped maintaining it, I kept using it for a while. And somebody else forked it and, and created something called Emerald Editor, I think it was called. But uh it just didn't, it just wasn't the same. What do you look for in a text editor for your daily work? Or do you prefer an IDE? Uh, what are the, what are the features? Well, you know, that... um, that's kind of a big question because I really don't do much debugging. And uh, so a debugger isn't that important to me. Mm -hmm. And actually I find when I was taking Visual Basic and using Visual Studio, I was amazed about the code completion, but really code completion just gets in my way now. So basically when I learned to program, I programmed with a text editor in the command line and I used Borland's command 
line C uh, compiler and a text editor, basically, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I really like the text editors that have a good terminal on them, an internal terminal that comes up, like the Linux program. Kate has a really nice one. I was just uh, looking at the uh, IntelliJet ID last night, and they have a really good uh, terminal, too. So that's really all I need is a editor to edit with and a terminal, you know? You just hit the points that uh, that I look for too. It's, it's I don't debug so much with a debugger. I, I debug, you know, with with right line or printf or whatever. When I I only go into the debugger when I need to, and I'm happy yeah, to do I, that from the terminal. I, I, I debug with printf for a long yeah, time. <laughs> yeah. And I got to have that terminal at the bottom of the window, you know. So that's that's why oh, yeah. I switched from Sublime Text. I you know I've I've kept a license of Sublime Text uh, since version three, and I I still use it occasionally for quick one off things. But I'm pretty much full time on uh, VS Code for just about everything I do now. Uh, VS Code, yeah. VS Code has a good terminal. Yeah. yeah. The first one that I ever used was uh, on Windows was the Decode one. Chris Miller wrote. wrote. Mm -hmm. It has a really it was a really nice editor. Mm. for me i mean it's that syntax highlighting and, and a terminal you know what more do you need yeah right chris miller was a uh, really prolific contributor to the d ecosystem his website you know is still active yes it is i found i saw that when i was uh, although, researching the talk although you have to convince your your browser to go to it because it doesn't have a security thing or oh, yeah right yeah. thing it's ridiculous i nabbed a screenshot i guess you nabbed a screenshot from the same place there the, of uh, entice from no entice. actually that's Screenshot from Entice was actually the Entice that I have on my computer. I still have it on my computer. Uh, okay. I also have decode still on my computer, my Windows computer. I just don't code on Windows very often. So Is Linux your I main platform it, or Mac? I switched to Linux. I don't know. It's been a while. It's been a long time. I've been on Linux for a long time. But I do most of my thinking around with code on uh, Linux. When I first bought a computer, it was a 386 with one megabyte of RAM. I downloaded a lot of shareware and just tried out different shareware. Mm -hmm. You know, I just like different software. I was trying to find different software that I liked. Mm -hmm. And so all of that stuff, when I find something I like, I just leave it. If I don't use it anymore, I archive it. I, I archive it on, on a flash drive now. So mm -hmm. I used to archive it on a CD-ROM. You know, I, I have kept a lot of stuff in uh, the physical world, but I, for some reason, have been really slack about keeping things uh, in the digital world. Well, I really like uh, open source because of that, too, because I, I try a lot of stuff out. Yeah. But yeah, I still have the I still have the the uh, around, and I'm sure you were around when the Tango and Phobos. I don't want to call them a war. It's a war. It was a split. It was a, it was a controversy for <laughs> yeah. sure mm. about which one people really liked. And that, actually, that was the first time I ever posted on a forum. Was someone wanted to know if they could use both, and I posted that you could use Junction on Windows, and basically it's a link to whatever folder you want it to be a link to mm -hmm. and so you can link it to either phobos or tango and use whichever library you wanted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was the first, very first post i ever posted the second one was actually a critique on the early uh, manual for tango and the tango people didn't really like my critique of it so a year later i bought their book so <laughs> you know, uh, i was one I of the co-authors on the book Somewhere between 2002 and 2008 is when I started looking at D. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I was doing is I got tired of Borland uh, C compiler. So I was looking for other compilers online when I ran into the Digital Mars website. And I actually paid the $15 for their, you know, their CD for the Digital uh, Mars uh, C compiler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I really liked about it was on the CD, it came with an editor. Yeah, custom custom built editor. Yeah, custom built editor. It was nice. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of picky about my. Well, I, I don't want to say I'm picky, but I'm not the kind of person to try and try and try many different things. I just uh, it, when I find something and I like it, I don't want to move on. I'm 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 there. Well, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't, I don't go look for something better. And so I tend to stick with uh, whatever editor, you know, grabs my fancy until I have a reason to not stick with it anymore. And it, actually it's that same reason, I guess, that I stuck with D because, uh, it scratched all my itches, you know, I mean, um, so I, I, was, know, that's why I still, still use it. Yeah. It's a lot better than C. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like it a lot better. And I took a C++ class too. And boy, that was just horrendous. I I did 
uh, I don't even want to talk about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I liked C. I took C because my brother told me that C was the closest thing to um, assembly as you get in a programming language. And I took several assembly languages classes too, like for the Motorola, for the Atmil processor. Because the junior college I was going to, they had a deal with, you know, a microprocessor thing going on. So they had different ones. Okay. I, I have a question for you about, um, you know, given all of this uh, testing you did and this data you've compiled on all the different editors, what's your opinion of the current state of the uh, editors in, in the D ecosystem? What state are we in? Are we? Are I think we... we're in a really poor state. We okay. really want to know the honest to God truth. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, how do I say this nicely? Don't be nice. Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something wrong with the idea of a, making a D plug-in for an editor that wasn't developed for D. And I was just looking, like I said to an intelligent yesterday, I mean, last night, you know, after the conference, because I wanted to check something out. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to check out was about the DMD thing, but I found out that you could actually use LDC as long as you're using Dub, mm -hmm. which is nice. But the plugin is written in Java, you know, because IntelliJ is a Java editor. Right, right. The Mono D plugin was written in C Sharp. Mm -hmm. And the Visual D is probably written in C Sharp too. I really don't know because I haven't looked into it. Well, it has a significant component written in D. So, does it? Yeah. And uh, the Dex editor is written in Pascal, and I'm pretty sure that's because, you know, uh, he's familiar with Pascal, and Pascal has a really good graphics library, which D does not have a really good graphics library, mm -hmm. you know, that's just written in D, for D. So that's important that, to you, then? Uh, is it that the the, the well, link? I think, it's a, I think it's important for to, uh, getting it more mainstream into people that are writing applications for, like, Windows or Linux. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a graphics library, and then... You know, like a form editor, like like Chris Miller, he wrote a really good one, but it was just for the DFL. Well, actually, it was for DWT, uh, the the D widget library. Or the D widget toolkit, yeah, the S yeah, SWT it, port. Yeah, that's what mm. it's called, the D widget toolkit. You could use either one. I didn't know that. I didn't know Entice Designer worked with DWT. That's news to me. Well, the yeah. later one did. The early one was just for for the D DFL form language. Yeah. I think something like this is important. That's why people use C Sharp because, you know, Visual Studio is the edit IDE for Windows programs. Yeah, I see. So your 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 um your thing here is not that they, you know D should have a, an IDE written in D, but it's just that an IDE written in D means we have the foundation for uh, other types of GUI libraries for people to to write. I see that. But, you know, in, in terms of editors, I mean, the trend has been polyglot. I mean, that's just the, the yeah, way it's been yeah, going. I, I so, understand that. Yeah. And, and with the interop with C and C++ now, I mean, you know, I can see the reason why. But the really big thing that I found was that a lot of the plugins are developed for until they're done developing and then they're not maintained anymore and the editor moves on and the plugin is no longer really working really well. That's what happened with Mono D. Mm -hmm. I happen to know this because I talked to Alexander, uh, not talked to him, but I emailed him about why his plugin wasn't working with the new uh, six version of Mono development. And he basically said that, you know, they changed the API drastically and they basically lost him. And I've also noticed that the newer ones, the newer mono development doesn't have C and C++ either because they lost that group too, you know, because they changed the the API drastically. Uh, we have a couple of comments in the live stream here. Uh, Steve yeah. Schweighoffer says that Vim is the best editor. And, yes, uh, well, you know what? I've never really liked Vim, but I, with playing with Vim with this project, I really finally understand Vim. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I finally got the, used to it, you know, because uh, I didn't start out on Linux. I started out on Windows, so. I've tried, but I just, uh, I can't. No, and, it's actually, uh, Emacs and, still bothers me, but uh, well, I'm I, getting too old to remember all those control and meta keys. I, I, I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten enough Vim down that I can SSH into a, a server and, and do what I need to do with Vim. A Adam also says now that uh, Vim doesn't require anything to work well with D, by the way, it just works out of the box. 
Uh, of course, Steve yeah, says it, it gets syntax, even syntax highlighting out of the box. NeoVim shot with the um, tag tree and uh, everything on it. I would take the tag tree and the other thing off and just leave the terminal personally. And I kind of like the relational numbering. In Vim, that's kind of important because you jump, you can jump around in the lines and, you know, to know how many lines back you want to go or forward you want to go. We have another uh, comment here from Adam uh, to remind us that uh, D has a cute GUI library that the live stream shit off yesterday. And yes, we all know about simple display, Adam. Yes. Yeah, I really think that if Adam really put his mind to that and got it really going where because he mentioned in his talk yesterday that he develops until he gets it to where he is happy with it. Mm. I think, you know, he did a really good job, but it needs to be better. <laughs> well, you know, I, I said earlier that Chris Miller was a prolific uh, contributor to the D ecosystem, and I don't think anybody has been more prolific than Adam uh, over the years. I, 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 oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I remember his first uh, D conference talk mm. where he got up there with no slides and tried to explain really well actually explained really well bare metal programming in d <laughs> you know so I'm, I'm curious to those of you in the live stream right now in the chat what's your go-to ide or editor for d what are you using the most uh you know what if it's a larger project i just use jenny it has mm. the debugger works sufficiently for me and it comes out of the box with d and you don't have to do any configuration other than minor stuff when i'm just dinking around on maybe one or two files uh, i still use sublime text i keep an external terminal open so i can uh, compile uh, Brian Callahan says he uses vim and i i have firsthand experience watching him use vim now that i've seen his workshop videos which you'll all see later. Steve I has. Adam was using Vim last night. Yeah. Steve has a question for you. Uh, do you prefer console editors or GUI ones? Oh, I prefer GUI ones. You know, like I said, I, I started out on Windows. I went to all my classes on with a Windows computer. So, you know, I just recently even found out that the Vim even existed. <laughs> ah. I changed to Linux about five or six years ago. And uh, I really like Linux a lot better. And I, but I've tried different three or four different Linux versions now. Mm. My desktop has Arch Linux on it, and my laptop has Zorin on it. Actually, I, I'm trying to remember. I think my uh, my first uh, when I first started programming, I, the, the first language I learned was Java. It was Java 1.1, I believe. It was late yeah. late '97. I, I was using I think Notepad for that until later. I started using Eclipse. But my first C and C plus plus environment was uh, Visual Studio. I was able yeah. to get my hands on a copy of Visual Studio uh, 6.0. And yeah, uh, it's really easy. Yeah. And it was, was the one I started on too. That actually. that was that was good. That was before they they changed it so much. But yeah, uh, before they mm. got really fancy with it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, um, I usually just use Jenny or, or Sublime Text. It depends on the project, really. Mm. Jenny is my default code editor. When I if I double click on any D code, it, it comes up in Jenny. Uh, we have uh, Adam says he used he used to use gedit when he was new to Linux and about the same time he was new to D. He said it was the closest thing he found to what he was used to at the time, which was Windows Notepad. You know why I like TextPad? My first Java class, I used TextPad because it was on Windows and it comes configured for Java, actually, to compile and run Java programs. But what I really, why I bought a license for it was because you can start it as administrator and make it your default text editor in windows so that notepad does not open when you double click on a text file because mm. i don't really don't like notepad at all i don't anymore <laughs> yeah I, I i didn't know the difference back then <laughs> drive me nuts g edit is actually my my uh favorite editor if i'm just looking at text files and it's a really nice editor for programming on too because it comes now it comes with a lot of syntax highlighting and it has a terminal and it's really pretty, pretty nice actually. Well, Sublime Sublime is my default text. I mean, I don't have it configured as my default text editor, but if I'm gonna open it up for quick editing, that's what I use. And in fact, I'm using well, it right I now. Use for quick editing too. Yeah, I'm using it right now for the uh, prize lists. We have a lot of stuff here about gedit. Yeah. Uh, Adam says here, it seems to have changed a lot since I used it back in the 2005. It looks, it looks weird, weird now. now because they changed the, uh, they changed the menu. If Adam wanted to have the old menu back, he should just use uh, XEd, which is how the old G editor used to look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have both on my computer. 
so when I'm just looking at text files, though, I just use uh, XEd actually. I just double click on and XEd comes up with the text files. Like I said, I like using different software. So, and I like trying out different operating systems. So I'm pretty good about changing things up. I mean, my brother gets frustrated with if he has to use any editor besides the brief editor or whatever editor he's using. I prefer being flexible. Well, I spend a lot of time, if, if I'm going to sit down for like two, three, four hours of programming or writing, you know, I, I don't even use writing uh, software for writing anymore. You know, I, I have a license for uh, Scrivener. Uh, but I don't, I don't use it oh, anymore. Yeah. I use Markdown for just about everything I do now. And I do that in VS Code. If I'm going to sit down for two or three or four hours of typing any kind of text, I'm in VS Code. I use it for Markdown. I use it for D. I would be using it for C or even Java today if I were you know, doing those. And I, I, I can't say I use it for D much anymore. I don't do so much programming now because I'm too busy. But, but it is my go-to editor for spending time. And I am thankful to to Jan for his uh, for yeah, their yeah. work for their work. Yeah, his uh, his uh, their, 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 and yeah. his his serve D and code D is really nice. Does a good job. Yeah, I'm they, glad to see that it's he's expanding to other text editors too. Although yeah. he admits that the uh, the text adapt is not quite quite ready yet, or the Sublime text is not quite ready yet. And like I said in my talk, I used I've used D Kit for years, so yeah, I, I'll I probably really, try it out someday though. Yeah, DKit. I'm trying. I didn't use DKit. There was another plugin I used for Sublime, and I can't remember what it was. There's been a couple of them. I did notice that the last time I tried to update DKit, it, it didn't update. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's he isn't uh, he isn't maintaining that anymore. But it works good. So I'll probably try out Code D and Sublime Text uh, in a little while someday. Mm -hmm. I got it on my list of things to do. So, so for future viewers of this uh, Q and A session here, um, Adam wants everybody to know that if you use the mini GUI and you have something to say about it, please let him know because he finds quote it needs work in quote kind of useless. But uh, if you have some uh, details, like uh, it sometimes uses uh, if checked and sometimes if is checked. That's something he can fix. So if, yeah. if anybody has problems with MiniGUI, please be detailed. You mentioned that last night about if you have any problems. And mm. I'm planning to, I haven't really checked it out, but I'm going. To, I'm planning to check it out, that in the, the DGUI library and see how it works. I've looked at the DLang UI extensively because I was interested in the IDE. Mm. I, really, I really did like that, the DLang IDE. But he hasn't uh, done any work on it since uh, well, 2016 or so. D, D Lang UI uh, has a new maintainer now. Um, oh, does it? Yeah. And I, I well, don't. The UI does. Yeah. Does the IDE have a new maintainer? Because uh, it, I assume, I, I guess Adam would know. Has Grim said he's going to do any work with the D Lang IDE, or is it just uh, the, the UI he's maintaining? If anybody knows, Ricky or Adam. Uh, yes, Grim is working on the IDE too. Cool. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Actually. I really like that uh, 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 that editor as an IDE as a as a D language IDE. I really I really liked it. He doesn't uh, hang out in the forums too much, but you can find him in the community Discord server. Uh, well, he's there yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, I have Discord on my computer and I never even open it. It took me a while to get into it. I fairly frequently check in there now. So, um, but, <laughs> well, I might do that, but. It like I say, I've been listening. I've been reading the forums for a long time, but I don't really post very often. I was really thankful for their help on the uh, Zeus editor, though, getting the debugger working. It's only partially working, but it works. It works better than it did when I first started. I didn't realize Zeus was still going uh, with D support because I know that was like one of the big options back in the the early D one days. Yeah, I um, I actually have a license for it that I've kept active. Mm -hmm. I have a persistent license for it actually i actually uh, bought it because i didn't i was anti microsoft at the time i'm mm -hmm. still sort of anti microsoft but i didn't really want to use anything like word or anything that made was made by microsoft so i bought it <laughs> <laughs> but i wanted a c and c++ editor it's a really nice c and c++ editor it's a really nice ide actually it's just out of date for D quite a bit. Yeah, that's that's kind of a problem for some of those. It's like even uh, Codeblocks, I think, doesn't yeah. always keep up with uh, 
with D. Cobalt comes out of the box working with D, but uh, like I said, I, I downloaded the brand new version and they just brought out a new version in it and the configuration didn't work for D. Mm. Yeah, which I, I, I find really frustrating. I used that for a while for C when I was trying to recapture the old Visual uh, Studio 6 days. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Yeah, it's a Visual Studio 6, isn't it? I've had code blocks on my computer ever since it came out, but ever since I started using Linux, but I don't use it very often. Gary in the chat says he's a noob, so he uses Visual Studio Code. That is a noob-friendly thing, absolutely. Yeah, v Visual Studio Code is really nice. There is one thing I don't like about it, and that's because it's you know built on a browser, basically, with JavaScript. I don't particularly care for that. But that's just me. I like things like Jitty that are made, you know. Well, VS Code, I, I remember when it first came out. Made, you know, in a browser, they're made. <laughs> well, when VS Code first came out, that was one of my problems with it. And it, it wasn't very performant compared to Sublime, but uh, eventually they closed the gap. Eventually I think. it's gotten mm. really good. Yes, yeah. I have to agree with you there. I have it on my computer. I was really sad that actually they they, they hear that uh, Adam when I, you know, they archived Adam. Oh, yeah. Good. Mm. And, you know, it, it didn't have any Microsoft stuff on it. So I liked it a lot better. But uh... so, uh, Larry, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's really nice to meet you. And I would like you to please go ahead and uh, give us some closing thoughts before we uh, call it. Well, I think I've already mentioned the closing thoughts. And uh, I think that um, well, in a... needs, a, needs a graphics library and they need an editor that's, you know, for D. Mm. Well, that works. Well, yeah. What else can I say? <laughs> we could borrow Robert's uh, Robert's closing line now that he uses yeah, every time. Yeah, D rocks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I agree yeah, with that. I agree rocks. with Robert. We can we can do that. All right, Larry, take care, and I All hope right. we get to do this again sometime. Well, yeah. Maybe someday. Yeah. It was a lot of work though, so I don't know. Uh, I know, <laughs> I know that. Yeah. All right, take care, man. Bye bye. Okay. Okay.